In December, my friend Joe and I spent our holiday traveling around Thailand for three weeks. It's my 10th visit to the country, but for Joe, it'll be his first. Our first tutu. <laughs> Having been to many places through the years, my objective is to show Joe some of my favorites while discovering new ones along the way. We'll start in Bangkok for the first three days. When the train comes, all these umbrellas, these awnings get pushed in, let the train pass. Wow. Then, we're traveling south to the coast of Krabi's Ao Nang, Raleigh Beach, Koh Phi Phi and Koh Lanta, before heading to Phuket, and I finish up in Pattaya. More than 5,000 right now, still walking. Riley? Riley, Riley, Riley. Wow, look at this. <laughs> we're on our way to Koh Phi Phi. So I just had my first underground illegal fight. I think you made him look like an amateur. Just made it to Koh Lanta. It was a perfect day on Boo Boo Island. I'm gonna head to Pattaya here at Thai Sky Adventures. My trip name from Lat Ma Yong Phong to Makin. Oh, that's spicy. This is a great experience. I love returning to the land of smiles and see why I think that Thailand is the Southeast Asian paradise. I've been going to Thailand since like 2013, seeing many wonderful places like Conchataburi, Koh Samui, Krabi, Phuket, and of course having so many amazing experiences. I'm from New York, we just take taxis. <laughs> which is why I've gone back pretty much every year, well, minus the COVID years. And one of the few places that I haven't gone to yet is Chiang Mai, which was gonna be the plan for this year. But when Joey and I started talking about plans for his birthday in December, I brought up Thailand and he said yes. And I was surprised because I have mentioned Thailand to him so many times before and it's always been met with like a, uh, maybe someday. So I thought that since this will be his first time, instead of just doing Chiang Mai, why not do an overall trip where we'll get to see some of the city, some of the nightlife, some temples, and then work our way down to experience the coast and then of course the islands. And so that's what we're gonna do. And I'm so excited to show him Thailand because as often as I've been there and as comfortable as I am being there, especially as a solo traveler, it is nice to share the experience with somebody. Now we get to escape the winter cold and enjoy our holiday in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> so let's go. Made it to Frankfurt. Joey and I have separate flights, but we will be meeting here in a few hours to catch our connected flight together to Bangkok. But I have a long eight hour layover. <laughs> it is. From Frankfurt is another 10 hours to Bangkok. That's interesting. Once we made it to town and settled into our Airbnbs, day one was spent not doing much besides a late night walk. Because we had no idea that the day that we landed was a national holiday. It was Constitutional Day, and the floating market that I planned to take Joey to was closed. In fact, they're all closed until the following Saturday, so hopefully we'll get to see some when we circle back to Bangkok later in the trip. But for now, we're gonna start bright and early hitting some temples because they're pretty far out, and then we'll see what happens for the rest of the day. We grabbed a quick and local bite. Our breakfast is on me. Breakfast to champions. Then we took the BTS SkyTrain to the Pranakong District, home to the Grand Palace. Residence to previous kings and royal families, I first came in 2019 and is a must-see. But south of the palace is Wat Po Temple, or Temple of the Reclining Buddha. Joe and the cats. <laughs> Always, every trip, this entire trip is basically be taking photos of cats. That's his thing. But this place is great, incredible amount of detail. Never been to this place before. We were on our way to the Grand Palace and then we saw this and we we're like, oh, let's just check it out. These are massive. My camera's definitely not doing it justice. Look at that. The complex houses the largest collection of Buddha images in Thailand. 
with the 46 meter long reclining Buddha as its centerpiece. How wide it is, it stretches from here, all the way down to the end. You found the big Buddha? Yes, we found it. <laughs> it's glorious. I've never seen anything like this. Along the length of the temple walls are 108 bronze bowls in which you pour purchase coins into each individually in hopes of good luck. I messed up the wish system there though. I dropped a couple, so I guess my wish ain't gonna come true. All right, now we're gonna head to another temple called Wat Arun, which I've been to before. <laughs> Wat Arun is just right across the river. I was definitely getting a bit nostalgic as we were going over the Chao Praya River. That took less than two minutes. Thank you. Yeah. It's definitely midday weather now. Getting roasted. A little bit crowded now, but it still brings back good memories. Translated to Temple of Dawn, Watarun is named after the Hindu god Aruna an imagery to the rising sun's light that reflects off the temple. Last time I was there, I had it to myself, but I think with the holiday, a lot of the locals came to get photos taken, which looked amazing, but it was way too busy. All right, we're out of here. It's just too busy for us. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that they really invest time into the wardrobe to take pictures here, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit much. We headed back to our Airbnb for an afternoon swim. There's a free melon right there. What if it fell on someone's head as they were swimming? <laughs> for lunch, we stopped at a nearby restaurant for local Thai food. Thank you, thank you. Went for the classic Pad Thai. You need some peanuts? I got some. <laughs> Best in the neighborhood, man. Come on. Then, in the evening, we went out for a special event. Yeah. Our first tuk tuk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this guy's going too fast and too serious. <laughs> Thank you. All right, tonight I get to do one of my favorite things to do in Thailand. That's to watch a live Muay Thai event. And I get the joy of sharing this experience. His first experience at a live Thai fight. Ring side. Ring side seats. I love Muay Thai. I train Muay Thai. It's basically the national sport and part of their culture. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're here at the Rachata de Nurm Stadium. And I'm very proud of myself for saying that because a couple of years ago, I was having a tough time pronouncing it. Here at Radada. Anyway, let's see some fights. Oh, it's the same exact scene I had last time. Really? Yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one he's rooting for. Oh! Oh I was promised 80% knockouts. And we're, at 50, <laughs> we're at 50 right now. Oh! 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 He's, not getting up. he's out, he's out. He's asleep. Right now, knockout percentage is 66%. If I stop, he got his nose broken. This is my 
might be a little bit biased, but Joe, who are you going for? Mexico? Mexico <laughs> Come on, Mexico! <laughs> I'm going with Cameroon. I'm going with Mexico. I'm going with Mexico. I think Cameroon got it though. He kept coming back. He kept coming back strong. Fair enough. I think it's totally fair. I don't think so. I think, I think he got it. Yeah? I think he got it. Alright. Wild fights, wild night. Because now we're going to head to Kaosong Road. Not as wild as I was used to be, but... Wow. Famously known as the Backpacker Ghetto, Kaosong is the tourist haven for after-hour bars, partying, food, and other exotic snacks. One in particular, I'm here to try. Good morning, day number three from Bangkok and our last full day before we head into Krabi tomorrow. Today we're gonna try to do the train market and the floating market, which we thought were closed, but I guess we just can't trust Google Maps <laughs> because a guide last night tried to sell us a package on it and said it was open. So we're gonna go and find out. It was a two hour drive to the Dam Nun Sudoak floating market. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Just southwest of Bangkok, at 62 miles, Dam Nung has become the most famous floating market amongst tourists. But after the first 20 minutes or so, that wasn't our impression, especially after we stopped for lunch. Yeah. That's to you. That's twenty dollars for that. Way overpriced. Um, not happy with this place. This place is a ripoff. Quickly uh, getting really turned off by this this tour. What they do is they just creep up to every shop to see if you want to buy something. Keep telling the guy we want to eat. Let's go to the big market. I think this is just it. Is that what we thought it was going to be? We, it was gonna we be. make the best out of it, right? But let's look at it as a nice experience. We're getting out of the city. We're seeing some interesting people. Let's make the best of it, man. Let's make the We're best here. Of it. I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is what I'm talking about. I think we were expecting more for the distance that we came. Our driver took notice and he did his best to try to make it as entertaining as possible. But it is a large area to cover and eventually we did make it to the floating market. Ah, oh, I think this is it! Yes! Yes! Alright. Okay, things just started looking better. This is more like it. This is much better. I'm happier now. Saute. Right here. Chicken. Chicken. How much? Chicken. Ah, uh, 90. 90 baht? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's good. This is turning out to be a way better experience now. Hey, hello, New York. Yeah. Right out. Pretty good. Good? Wow. Thank you. Okay. The last stop was to a temple, which we weren't interested in going in, so we ended feeding the catfish in the river. Whoa! Wow! Humongous! <laughs> That'll get him. That'll get him. <laughs> there we go. What's your final thoughts? 
not worth it. It was maybe five minutes of a stretch of a floating market, yeah. and then like one hour and 50 minutes of just nothing. Yeah. It wasn't as terrible as I thought originally. It got better in that little middle section you were talking about. I still think it's highly overpriced. Overpriced. And I understand that communities need to make a living, but if you're charging that much money, like my question is, where's the money going? Because that community needs massive amounts of infrastructural help. If it's between this and Talinchang, definitely 100% Talinchang. Just 20 minutes away, we checked out the Meiklong Railway Market. This place looks a little bit more upgraded from the last time I came here. <laughs> so the appeal to this train market, or umbrella market as it's called, is that all the stores are really close to the tracks and they're all on these wheels or tracks. So when the train comes, all these umbrellas, these awnings get pushed in, the stores get pushed in, let the train pass, and then they reopen again. So it's pretty cool. I hate the smell of raw fish. Jesus Christ, don't hurt anybody. It is hot. It is hot. We decided to avoid the sun with refreshments to cool off and wait for the next passing train. Alright, here we go. Oh, that is close. Oh, hi. Back to business. Just got in and I'm a sweaty mess and Joey and I are both exhausted. So to summarize today, I would say that this was a very long and overpriced day and it just didn't meet the expectations that I had or the hopes that I had for the market or even the train market. So I'm kind of looking forward to leaving Bangkok, leaving the city, seeing something different, hitting the islands and doing things that are a little bit more relaxing. The next morning, we boarded the one and a half hour flight from Bangkok to Krabi, eager to experience the sun in paradise beaches of the coast for the next three days, once we landed. Tsunami torrential downpour right now. Welcome to Krabi. Welcome to Krabi. <laughs> it was a short drive to the beach town of Ao Nang, where we'll be staying. And though it wasn't the perfect beach day, the rain did stop just in time to check in and later that day enjoying the evening for a special occasion. Wow, it's dark but it's a beautiful view. Happy birthday to you. This better not be for me. I'll fucking kill you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Enjoy it, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> we then went to the Ao Nang night market to catch some of the local outdoor festivities. We grabbed a couple of market treats and ending the night at another Muay Thai event, which had a variety of talent, but by far, it was the main event of seven-year-olds that stole the show. The 
next morning, we woke up bright and early because the day's plan is visiting an elephant sanctuary. I love elephants. They're one of my favorite animals on the planet. Made the mistake of doing elephant riding years ago when I first started going to Thailand because it was such a novelty, touristy thing to do. And then when I went back to Thailand in 2019, I got to go to a sanctuary and that was really nice. It's just something really calming and peaceful being so close to these incredibly intelligent and gentle creatures. Because of all the negative attention and press that Thailand's gotten for doing elephant riding, so all of these places that used to do riding are non-existent anymore. And what they've done is kind of like rebranded themselves as elephant sanctuaries, where elephants get to just live on a compound and live out their final years in peace, which is a wonderful thing. And Joey's never been that close to an elephant, so it's gonna be a great day for both of us. The tour arranged for a shuttle to pick us up at the hotel, then it was a short drive to the Krabi Elephant Sanctuary, which also has baby lions. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. My name is Ta. Okay, now we are be, uh, the biggest animal in the world, yeah? And, and oh my god. Have you ever crossed with them before? But On today, the television. in Thailand, more than 5,000 right now still walking and about 1,000 left in the jungle. Elephant eat all the time. I will rate 10% of the weight. So this one's blind, you have to tap it on the, the trunk. Uh, got it. Want another one? <laughs> it's going for my camera. 80% <laughs> of an elephant's day is spent eating, sleeping only two to four hours, and relaxing the rest of the time. Caring for them is expensive, as they can no longer survive in the wild, which is why supporting sanctuaries through tourism is important. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm being attacked. <laughs> Put it in the mouth. Yeah. Whoa. It's weird. <laughs> can I eat Okay, okay, here you go. They eat 18 hours a day, and they sleep for what, two, four hours a day? 30 liters of water. 30 liters of water? Wow, that's a good life, eating and shitting. Oh. <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> On video, yes I did. Oh, look at that. I think it's amazing that they have all this free open space to roam around in. And I think now we're gonna do the mud bath, which is supposed to be cooling for them. This is the youngest one too, 30 years old. It's the biggest one. I definitely need a bath now. Oh. That was not good. Oh. <laughs> River, yeah, <laughs> bath. <laughs> Definitely need a bath. A lot deeper than I thought. Yeah. Fell in, about knee high. <laughs> Just embrace it. <laughs> it's gonna be a messy day today. Good girl. That time's over. Still my God. That, that sounds like a boat. <laughs> what a day. What a messy day. <laughs> After cleaning up, Joe decided to gift one of the staff, an avid rock shirt collector who had been eyeing his t-shirt the entire day. Okay. Okay. I give it to you. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. You don't want it? I want it, but I don't want to because you like it. What's your name? My name's Joe. Your name's Joe? 
Yes. <laughs> it That's was meant name. to be. So, so. His name is Joe. My name's Joe. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Same name. Same, Same name. name. That's me. Joe. He probably spells really? it differently. Yeah. Oh, pleasure. It's destiny, man. It's fate. Okay. Joe is giving Joe the yeah. yeah. Slayer shirt. Yeah. Shirts. Because Joe collects Thailand. shirts. My friend in Thailand. Yeah, don't Right now. Thank you, my brother. Enjoy, brother. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. You're such a sweetie. I never met a lion before. Faithful. Are oh, you want to play? Okay. Bye bye. Once we got back to town, we spent the rest of the afternoon at Ao Nang Beach. This is more like it. Thank you, Krabi. And thank you, son, for bringing us such a beautiful day. Our last day in Krabi. Joey was feeling a little bit under the weather yesterday. Thankfully, he's recovered. And we didn't really have anything planned for our last day other than hanging out here at the beach. We might come back here for sunset. But uh, yeah, for now, let's just enjoy this quiet time on the beach. I tend to preach a lot about uh, temperature, cold water temperature, but the water here in Thailand has been perfect. Is Joe way out there? <laughs> we didn't have much planned, possibly to go see a cave, but nah, this is much better. I mean, what a wonderful way to spend our last day in Krabi. Peaceful, other than the long tail boats with their loud motors. I like that. Yeah. Check out that view, fantastic. In the evening, we return to the beach for sunset, enjoying our final moments in Ao Nang. Hello everyone, welcome to Ao Nang Beach, we're from the team. It's so long for Krabi, and it's been a nice stay here. Actually, even Joey said it yesterday that this is the first time being here in Krabi that it started actually feeling like a vacation. And I think it's because we kind of took it slow. We didn't really have that much activities like we did in Bangkok. And I agree. And, you know, I have to realize that when I'm traveling on my own, I'm always on the go, go, go. It's just the way I'm built. To me, the filming is the fun, but not everyone's like that. So I want to take things slow when we're at the islands so that he doesn't risk a chance of getting like burnout and actually enjoying this vacation. I think the best way for us is to kind of just pace ourselves. We'll have like one or two activities on the itinerary, but nothing too overwhelming with plenty of time to kind of like just chill out and do nothing if you want to. Just trying to be a better friend. <laughs> and now we're going to be heading to the beach to take a long tail boat to Riley Beach. Riley. Riley, Riley, Riley. And I'm pretty excited because I've never been to this place before, so Joy and I will be experiencing this island for the first time together. In a suitcase in the sand. <laughs> Getting to Riley is just a 15 minute trip by long tail boat to the west side of the island where we'll be staying the next two days. First signs of monkeys, they're all over the place. Ah, oh, just checked in. I am a sweaty mess, but check out this place. I think we have our first guest. Hi, buddy. This is sweet. I got my own rooftop deck. All right, you won't believe this, but <laughs> I just made a new friend. Oh my God. The weather was absolutely perfect. So we hit the beach and I went to explore with some outdoor fun. Let me properly introduce you to Riley Beach. We are on the west side of the beach and we're staying on the east side, which I will admit is not as nice as the west side, but that's probably also because we came during low tide. So I'm pretty sure it looks just as nice as later on in the day. But it's only a 10 minute walk to get across the uh, east side, so it's not a big deal. Joey's opted to stay on the beach and read his book. And I'm doing some kayaking, getting some sun and some exercise. 
the guy was like, if you want, about 15 minutes. There's another beach over there. <laughs> can go to another beach about uh, 15 minutes. That's can... too much work. Yeah, a little bit too strong. I'm too, I'm too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. But this is an awesome view. All right, fuck it. Let's be ambitious. I think he's talking about this little cove over here. Did you guys make it inside there? Is it nice? Yeah. Let's do it. Well, the beach is just there. It's not even 10 minutes, so. It wasn't very far, but when you're paddling against the current, it's a lot of hard work. Ah, this is about as close as I'm gonna get. All the long tail boats are passing through now, so I'm fighting against the current. So let's head back. Hi. <laughs> is it deeper than this or that's it? No, we don't have nothing. That's it? Yeah. Well, you can go to the beach. Through this hole right here. Wow, look at this. Shortcut. <laughs> As if I wasn't already struggling on my own kayaking. As I'm entering the beach, I see Joey and he's like, Can I have to ride back to shore? Jump on in! He tries to jump on board and then we immediately capsize. Push really hard. Whoa! Oh! Oh! And my instant reaction is panic because I don't want the kayak to like land on its head. I mean, for God's sakes, I already cracked him in the face, white water rafting our last trip to Ecuador. <laughs> it's still filming. Yeah, it's still filming. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. I don't even know if that was more than 40 minutes. I think 45 minutes, but that was a good workout. Thank you. So, first day in Riley, and my first impression is that I really like it here. It's got like a nice vibe to it, it's really chill. And now I think we're getting into a really good groove on this vacation. And I think that the rest of the islands are gonna kind of mimic that same feeling. Exploring the island, we came to Phra Nang Beach, popular amongst tourists for rock climbing, but also a sacred place amongst locals. Good morning. Woke up really early just to wander around the island and explore. And we've just come to this cave of dicks. No, really, check it out. Now, in all seriousness, guys, it's not just a random cave of dicks, but I'm sure I would do a voiceover later on articulating that a lot better than what I am now. These phallic objects are to the princess goddess Phra Nang, whose spirit is believed to reside within the cave. The symbols are associated with fertility and virility for the fishermen and locals who come to pray for good fortune and prosperity. He's come to get fertility blessings. As we were heading back, it's surprising to see how there are just monkeys everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. So we're back on the west side of Raleigh Beach, our final beach day. Because tomorrow, we're heading to Kopipi. Waiting at the pier for our ferry to Pipi Island. Got my sticker. Everything's like on a sticker system here. <laughs> you give them a ticket, they give you a sticker, you get on the ferry. And we should get there in about two hours. Get my sticker. First, it'll be a long tail to get us to our speedboat, which should only be a few minutes. It's like we got engine trouble. Uh -oh. Better get Mako. Oh. <laughs> engine trouble here. And then we're gonna mess. Yeah. 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 To get to the beautiful island of Koh Phi Phi, it's just one and a half hours by speedboat. Gorgeous, I love it here. 
I came here a long time ago, many years ago, so it's going to be interesting. We'll have three days in Code PP, so finding a tour booth on the way to the hostel, we signed up for an activity for the following day. Okay, you go with the trip, a water car for the day by the hostel. Later that day, we decided to hang out and watch live entertainment at the reggae bar. The appeal to this bar is that the contenders are members of the audience with the liquid courage to step into the ring for the grand prize of buckets of watered-down booze. The fun is watching unskilled people flail around, which Joe found wildly amusing. Now, I don't drink, but as a practitioner and admirer of the art fight, Tony? and Joe's persuasion, I suddenly found myself stepping into the ring. Yeah, last night was a weird one because he clearly had an agenda and it just didn't go his way. <laughs> but let's just say that he had a very attractive lady with him that night that I think he was trying to make a, an impression on. As round one happens, we're going very light to show that this is just for fun but I can touch you. And I clearly see that it's getting to him. So by round two, the dynamic changed. Being in combat, I clearly understand sparring. I'm still going very light because it's it's supposed to be fun. We're in Thailand, we're on vacation, you know, we're not trying to kill each other here. It was supposed to be all with fun, it was on a whim. I just had dinner an hour before. I mean, for God's sakes, the guy came with his own shiner, his own mouthpiece, and refused to wear headgear, which I didn't even realize until Joey pointed out to me on the second round. This guy is trying to knock my head off. Clearly, the guy has some intentions. <laughs> He took it a little bit more seriously than I thought and so by round three I'm hitting him a little bit harder but I'm still trying to make it a fun thing because it's male egos, it's sportsmanship and I think I accidentally dick punched him. And then uh, I just saw his eyes change, <laughs> like he looked directly at me when he got back up, slapped the gloves and came straight at me and I allowed him to come straight at me because hey, you know, it's all fair. He tried to wail on me. Nothing got through, but then I slipped on the corner because they were pouring water on me. Can we get some water over the head. So I think they call that a knockdown. It wasn't a knockdown, it was a slip. So, in the middle of the third round, um, I let him come towards me and let him get his frustrations out. We duked it out to the final bell. Hopefully uh, he made an impression on his lady that night and I helped him get laid, so you're welcome. So I just had my first uh, amateur underground illegal fight. How'd I do, coach? You did terribly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did really well. I got a shiner. Great head movement. I'm proud of this one. Tony gassed out by the third round. It was obviously very hot. I had too much masaman before we went in the ring. <laughs> in all fairness, Tony was in the ring with a with an obvious ringer. That guy had his own mouthpiece, he had his own gear. So obviously he was trying to fucking do some damage. And I think he did really well. I think I think you made him look like an amateur. I think he did really well. <laughs> Thank you. I can't to say that. Good night. Waking up at 5 a.m. the next morning, we began our island hopping tour with sunrise as we made our way to the famous Maya Bay. Maya lays within Cope PP Lay, the location from the movie The Beach. Its popularity grew and in 2018 was forced to shut down due to massive tourism destroying its ecosystem and marine life. Nearly four years, it's back to its original form, reopening January of 2023 and displayed as the image of perfection depicted in the movie. <laughs> it is beautiful, but unfortunately its popularity gets spoiled by Instagrammers, which we had a good laugh at. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations? reality. But it was good to see people taken in the moment, in their own way. Building the universe. Yeah. 
I actually came here in 2015, 2016, when it could actually snorkel in here. Now, it's changed a lot since it's been closed off for years. Now it looks immaculate, the way it should be. Can't really swim in it, but it's beautiful to look at. After Maya Bay, we sailed to the location of Pipi Dong to do some snorkeling. Beautiful piece of coral. And the fish, they don't move. They're like right in your face. Our next stop was to Monkey Island. And as the name suggests, they were everywhere. They're all over the place. I love monkeys because their mannerisms are so human-like, but that charm can quickly turn territorial and aggressive. I got so wrapped up into filming that I think I may have gotten too close, and then I ended up getting attacked. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, you sticking up me. Aggressive little fuckers, you saw what happened? I saw he chased you out. I got too close to the baby. Yeah, monkeys are gangsters and hooligans. They completely control that island. All right. Hey, Wow. After overstaying our welcome, we got to relax on Bamboo Island. Wow, this is gorgeous. Kind of reminds me of like Chicago Island in the Philippines. Pristine. <laughs> We're in a pool of Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like clear, right? Silver. This is one of the nicest white sand beaches I've ever seen in my life. Amazing how Thailand has managed to clean these places up so well and keep it as pristine as it is. Good job, Thailand. We could have easily spent more time at Bamboo, but we had one more stop to make, snorkeling at Lana Bay. Once getting back to town, we went for dinner with Joe working on his Thai skills. Joe, he's got his Thai cheat sheet notes. He's gonna work on it. Yeah, give it a go. Oh, you passed. Did he do good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's another travel day as our time in Ko PP is done. We're now taking a 35 minute ferry to spend the next two days in Koh Lanta. My Airbnb arranged for a pickup, which was a fun tuk tuk ride. Once getting into town and settling in, Joey and I spent the afternoon on the nearby beach relaxing. That was pretty much it, as we have a day of activities planned for the following morning. Good morning, Green number two from Koh Lanta. Today we're doing a half day tour, so it's gonna be a fun day today. And the shine is coming in real nice. We'll be taking a long tail boat from the Tung Yi Ping village for a day of seeing caves, going kayaking, and stopping at different islands. I guess you're in front, Joe. Look at that. 
bets frighten me, Alfred. Now my enemies will feel my dread. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is, man. It really does look like an elephant. Oh, it's a good workout. Rocking the Thai classics. Toe tapper. <laughs> we stopped for a brief snack, sharing some with our friends the monkeys before our next location. Our long tail was set at manual cruise control. Then we were off, passing an island I can only describe as the perfect location for Skull Island. Then it was to our final destination at Boo Boo Island. Once we arrived, our guide set us up with a table to enjoy a lovely Thai lunch for the entire group. Cheers. Looks like a storm is coming, but for now, this is a perfect day on Boo Boo Island. Hey, Ark Travels fans. I'm rarely ever given any chance to monologue here. Tony monopolizes his devices. I stole it from him. And he's too scared to come out into the deep water. So as long as I keep swimming away from him, I can take this and talk as long as I want. Now a lifeguard. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a swimming pool. After a nice afternoon, we began to head back, but not before our guides paid a visit to a friend. I've never seen a wet monkey, it looks kind of <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Not even sharing with his friends. How much can he, how much can he eat? He's eating so much fruit. Yeah. I, I don't understand how he's not gonna pass out. <laughs> he's the only one that swam over, so. No, it's, yeah. it's funny because he's, as soon as he saw the boat, he swam yeah, over, yeah. he knew. Yeah. <gasps> We said goodbye, and that was the end of a short but great stay in Koh Lanta. <laughs> We're at the tail end of this trip, and in the morning, we'll be heading to Phuket. All right, good morning. Packing up my stuff, <laughs> and there's like this beautiful songbird outside. I have no idea what that is. There it is. Anyway. Phuket's gonna be a little bit different than what we've seen because while these islands have been more like chill out, relaxed vacation places, Phuket's gonna be a little bit more on the wild side. You know? <laughs> so it's gonna be kind of interesting to see Joey witness that and, and, and experience it for the first time. Here we go with the stickers again. It'll be a nauseating one and a half hour speedboat to Phuket. Just got in. This apartment is crazy. Check this out. About to be Joey in Bangalore Road. I gotta be careful with my hands. It's fun to walk the street, a lot of bars and restaurants there. But the best way to get there is my motorbike. Cheap and easy. I took Joe to witness the madness that is the Patong walking street. Lined with bars and strip clubs is Phuket's wildest street. Welcome to Patong. The craziest street of all of Phuket. Hey Joe, you wanna go clubbing? I don't know if Spider-Man got down like that.
after a bit of fun, we made our way through the crowd to the beach and caught some festive fireworks. Good morning, day number two from Phuket. We've come to Badong Beach. I just passed through Walking Street, which is <laughs> a lot quieter than it was last night. Anyway, Christmas Day, and we're gonna treat ourselves to a little bit of action adventure with some jet skiing. Fun. Thank you. All right. What a way to spend Christmas Day, huh? Merry Christmas, everybody. We chilled in Patong for the day. Then, in the evening, we went to visit a weekend night market. All right, welcome to the Naka weekend night market. This place is loaded with tons of different shops. You can buy little knickknacks and snacks and food. Joey's already got his meat on the stick. Mm. We haven't gotten past half of one alley and Joey's already bought two things. <laughs> There's so much going on, but that night we were most impressed with the entertainment. So many trees, so many snacks. Oh, it's all gone. The last one. <laughs> I got the last oh. one. <laughs> Look the last Lucky one. <laughs> it's got a Pepsi can poison as well. Admiring the characters and atmosphere, we came across an old favorite being eyed by our Cali friend Wedrick. At Wedrick underscore DC. So what are you eating, bro? I had scorpion in Bangkok already, so I think I'm done with I had my fill of scorpion. You wanna give it a shot? Scorpion? Yeah, give it a shot. Come on, when you when you gonna ever eat scorpion in your life? Sure. <laughs> What's scorpion for him? That's yours, buddy. So how do you eat it? You just right up the stick. Head first, you can do tail first. Yes, look at that. Yeah. Fucking champ, not even a wince. <laughs> what do you think? Definitely crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been way worse. Yeah, it could have been way worse. We're really overdoing it tonight. Coconut milkshake? Coconut milkshake, yes. Uh, how much? Our time in Phuket is done. Hanging around Patong for a couple of days was uh, pretty wild. Patong is kind of a party town and that's what we came here for. You know, to get a good balance of between culture and relaxation and a little bit of partying. And I think we've done that pretty well. But we are now at the tail end of this trip. We'll be heading back to Bangkok. Joey's gonna stay back in Bangkok to wind down for a couple of days before heading back home. And I'm gonna head to Pattaya to close out this tail end of the trip. One more stop to make. Let's do it. It's just a two hour bus ride to Pattaya. All right, just arrived at the station. Let's find a taxi. 
All right, welcome to Pattaya. It's a place I've been to before. I'm basically here for two days for one thing. And it's because it's been a while, or at least a couple of episodes, where I haven't said that we're gonna be ending this trip with an epic adventure. And this is something that I've done a few times before with my friends years ago, but definitely not in Thailand, and definitely not on a vacation. So, strap on in, because it's gonna be a good one. All right, so. For today's activity, we are going skydiving. Here at Thai Sky Adventures, we actually drove about 25, 30 minutes outside of Pattaya. I thought we were gonna be doing it like maybe on a nearby beach, but apparently not. Anyway, this is something that I did many years ago, probably about a decade ago, and didn't even get a video out of it because I was young and broke. Actually, I did get one video the first time I did it, but uh, the quality was really poor. So hopefully this time we do it justice. So let's get going. I was paired up with George, who ran through the basic instructions, and we were ready to go. You will feel this. Mm -hmm. Then you can open up your arms, let go, get into this position. You happy? I'm super happy. Yes. Perfect day outside. Get to end my trip skydiving. What better way to end a trip, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. You coming with us? You coming with us? Exhilarating. I mean, what a way to end the trip. Seeing Pattaya in the distance and all of this beautiful landscape. And as you're gliding there, in awe of all this beautiful landscape, all of a sudden you're just like awakened by like a sudden yank of the cord. <laughs> Which is like, of course, not the most comfortable feeling as your balls go into your throat, but what a perfect day out. George even let me control the shoot, which was really cool. Welcome <laughs> back! Yeah. yeah! Perfect landing, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Great activity to end the trip on, and now I head back to Bangkok to hang with Joey for a couple of days, and that's it, the trip's done. We go back to New York. I even got myself a little souvenir for today's participation. Oh my God, what a face. I look like the Joker. <laughs> and yes, I realize I look absolutely ridiculous in that helmet. After my one day adventure, the next morning, I headed back to Bangkok. Where you get up? Thank you, Mai. Thank you, Mai, okay. Arriving with one full day left to our trip meant that there was still time to finish off with one last activity. And you thought we were gonna end this video with the skydiving. No, we have one more day. So we're here at Taling Chang Floating Market. This is the place that I originally wanted to take Joey, but the day that we arrived, it was a holiday, so it was closed. And it's only open on the weekend. So we ended up going to a different night market, which was disappointing. This one, I think, is gonna make up for that. And so we're gonna spend the day here because this is the last day, like literally last day, as I will be going back home, packing my stuff, and then have a 6 a.m. flight. So let's shop around. Good to be back here. Brings back memories. When we got there, the vibe was different. It didn't look as busy as I remembered it. it Looks like they just opened up. The boats that used to sell food were no longer there. I thought, did we just make another mistake? The boats would be all through here. We did see reviews that were saying the floating market is no longer a floating market since COVID. There weren't that many boats selling food, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll stick around to the afternoon and see if anything changes. Just when we thought the day was going to be another disappointment, we met this woman. Miss Coffee from Miss Coffee. Thailand. Thailand, Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. We're going to be doing a boat tour with our new friends, the German couple. What's yeah. your names? Misha. Misha. And Variola. Things began to look up with Miss Coffee's energy and personality. Candido, take me home. <laughs> to the I belong. Where's the 
Mr. Coffee, are you married? No, I think so. You want to be married to me? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Weaving through the canals, Miss Coffee will be taking us to another floating market not too far away. This is more this place I was going to for the last time, right? Yeah. I love the energy. We did this right. We ended it right. You want my Thai order? Okay. Yes. We're gonna stop here for 20 minutes, she said. Hello, good morning, Pata, Papa. Trusting her knowledge, we were gonna have lunch with the best pad Thai in the market. Yeah. That's you. And that's her. <laughs> Oh, yummy, yummy. Yay. Yay. Perfect. Number one beef up from mm. my young fork market. What's your name? Ton. My name is Ton. Are you going to get all of them spicy? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> spicy, spicy. See, this one's yours. Okay. Okay. Spicy. 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 It's definitely delicious. Okay, man. Yeah. Okay, man. Good, man. Oh, that's spicy. Yeah? Mm. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hit me right away. Yeah. Cheers. All of this for 100 baht. 100 baht is about like $2.70 right now. It's like one, two, three, four. Six pieces. Hey! Fantastic. Now back on the boat. Bye bye. 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 Hello. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, different than Thai Chan. Still good. But this is a great experience. Ten times better. Yeah, five times better. Prices. Yeah. That couldn't have gone any better. The location, the vibe, the food, prices, everything was great, including Miss Coffee. <laughs> what an experience this was. And this is how you end a Thailand trip. With someone like that, we coffee. Love you. We, love, we love coffee. <laughs> Returning to Taling Chan, we stuck around to try more treats. Wow, hearts on it. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. They, they roasted in the bamboo. We're definitely overeating, trying everything at the market. Bamboo stick, right? Mm. That's sticky, right? That's good. And that's how we spent our last moments, hanging with Miss Coffee and spending time at the market. We did get to have one more pool day, and in the morning, I went back home. What a trip this was. 21 days, and even after a 10th visit, it still managed to be as fresh and exciting as the first. Mainly because, this time, I didn't go alone. I'm happy I finally convinced Joe to come, and we're fortunate to be able to experience another country and adventure together. And of course, it's the land of smiles. So if you haven't heard it a thousand times before, you will meet some of the nicest people in Thailand. <laughs> there were a few hiccups at the start, but once we got into a groove, it just got better. Particularly for me in the middle half, traveling to new locations along the coast of Krabi. It's simply paradise. Most importantly, Joe got to see for himself why I keep coming back. From culture, food, fun, nightlife and beaches, Thailand offers it all. So hopefully, I can say that this won't be our last visit to Thailand. Till the next one. Activities around here. <laughs> Say something cool, Joe. My dick's hard. Yeah. Okay, can't use that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> is it Jupiter or Dick and Balls? How is that a Dick and Balls? <laughs> no, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Never mind. It's open weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Ooh. 
<laughs> oh. I gotta, I gotta be tough for my new wife. I have to be tough. <laughs> That's my hokiness. That's my one hokiness.